Hi, Don here. Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. I'm going to go over today some tips on 10xing your orthotics. I think for, for, for a lot of us, our orthotics are probably the, the most valuable uh, asset in our practice and very beneficial to patients, but sometimes we can struggle with, with how to offer more uh, orthotics and get our patients to take our recommendation. My goal here with Podiatry Practice Mastery is to bring your practice to the million dollar mark. That's when I'm putting these these resources together for you to help you help you get there. And I find orthotics are one of the, the biggest things. If you look at your numbers kind of at the end of the year or each, even at the end of each month, a big portion can come from or, orthotics. I'm not really specific to any orthotic company. We've used a number throughout the years. I really like both Forward Motion and I like Northwest. Those are the two that we mainly use, but there are a lot of other great companies that are out there. Those are just the ones that I have more experience with. I'm not going to talk so much about the orthotic prescribing process or how to make an appropriate orthotic or make an appropriate prescription for your patient. I'm going to talk more about how we can offer these more to our patients. And I'm speaking to an area in, in Massachusetts where in orthotics normally aren't covered. So I'm talking about how you're going to have patients pay, pay for them. So number one would be, you know, if you're going to be talking about price, it's a lot easier just to be always the most expensive than the least expensive. Okay. I know this is kind of contraintuitive to what we do, but something that people pay more for, they value more and something that they pay less for, they value less. If you're going to have to talk about price, you might as well talk uh, about being the most expensive. The best way to determine that is pretty much take what everyone else charges and make yours higher. Okay. I know this sounds scary. You may say, well, but I've been charging so much for, for such a long time. But it, it, the easiest thing you can do to increase revenue for your practice is just to increase your price. It's not something that patients can get anywhere else. If it's something that truly is valuable and you stick behind it, then there should be no reason to increase the price. I know many people charge more than us. We charge $600 for, for a pair of orthotics. And we, when people get a second pair, we, we discount that by 200. So they pay 400 for additional pairs. And there are some patients that get additional pairs. And so what we first just talking about the additional pair, when patients pick up their orthotics, they pick it up with our staff and I see them six weeks after when they pick it up inside the package, there is an explanation of why they might want a second pair of orthotics. They might want a, a orthotic for working out. They might want a dress shoe orthotic. They might want uh, just a second pair because they don't like moving them from shoe to shoe. So we talk about that when they when they pick up their their orthotics. There's a little paper handout, and we say you have so many months to get a second pair at this discounted price of of two hundred dollars off. And that's kind of how we do it. And we so we do a number of of additional pairs of orthotics. Um, how can you do more orthotics? I, I I like the idea. A couple of things that work for me because I, I I struggle. I, my my partner he does a lot more orthotics than I do. And I think it's because he kind of has more of a more time practicing. I think he he's kind of a wordsmith. So, but some things that have helped me to kind of get to his level is I, I try to set a goal for two orthotics per day because if I can get to two per day, and I work let's say 20, 20 days per month, that would be forty orthotics. So I kind of have that in the back of my mind. I always try to average about two orthotics per day, and having that goal frequently helps me to get to that goal. Okay, so that's one thing, just to make a goal. Second thing is <clears throat> I, I include orthotics on my treatment sheets when I'm going over treatments for patients. And I say, well, this is kind of how we treat this. So those are kind of the logistical things when we talk about the presentations and the treatments. With the, with the patient in the room, the, the best thing that I find for doing orthotics is explaining to them. So really kind of teaching and instructing them the importance and the, and the value of orthotics. A couple of things that work for me is I say orthotics, you know, don't take away the pain, but they help the pain from coming back. And so when I talk about treatments, I talk about there are certain treatments that are used to get rid of the pain, such as cortisone, shockwave, things like that. And then there are other things to help the pain from coming back. And that's where I think the orthotics are, are beneficial if they're made appropriately for, for most people's feet. And so I talk, I talk about that in educating them or teaching them kind of the, the rationale, kind of showing them, letting them hold a pair of orthotics in their hands, explaining to them, when I'm explaining to them, I explain the difference between a custom and a non-custom. And, and some patients want to try the non-custom. And I'm okay with that because I, I think they're totally different things, right? The main things I emphasize with a custom orthotic is the deep heel cup 
and the high contouring arch, but I say it's not an arch support. It's more of a heel stabilizer. And the way I do that is I, I hold the foot. I, I hold the heel. This is what I normally do. I hold the heel and I abduct the foot and I, and I let the heel go out and then I stabilize the heel and then I push it out and, and I find that that doesn't allow the foot to move as much. And that's showing the stability of having a deep heel cup. So I, I do something called a, a dynamic demonstration where I hold their foot and I show them the orthotic stabilizes things. And this kind of, this stabilizes like the foundation of your body. And by stabilizing things, it, 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 it it's going to help you not have everything not have to work as much. So anything that's tenderness or, or joints or anything like that is going to help with that. That's the first thing that I find that works for me. The second thing is I, I do a gait evaluation for them and I can show them the pronation of their foot. So when their foot pronates down, I can then go and then supinate it just by moving the talus a little bit, having them fo- rotate their foot out. And I can show them where their foot should be and then where their foot is and why that puts a lot of extra strain on their tendon. So those are things that are called a, a dynamic demonstration when you're talking about like kind of marketing. Okay. And ways that I can improve, I I think with orthotics, a lot of times I will wait for the second or third visit to, to offer orthotics. But what I find is that patients, when they come in with the, with the heat of the pain, they're, they're more willing to, to do orthotics. And so if it's the right thing for them, you can offer that the first visit. I know back in the day when I didn't do as much shockwave, I did more of just cortisone. I found that the things that worked best, I was doing a cortisone to calm down the pain, orthotics to stabilize their foot, and then like foam rolling on the back of the calf with a nice splint. Since I've switched more to, to shockwave, I'm tending to do a lot less cortisone, but I'm also, I also feel like I'm doing a, a little bit less, less orthotics. So some, some things that have helped, helped me, if I go back and do like a cortisone and orthotics the first visit, and then consider the shockwave after the cortisone's out of the body, that might be a better way. I'll probably do a little bit less shockwave, but it's actually a little bit easier to do an orthotic than it is three sessions of shockwave. Okay. If, if, if you consider the price, it's going to be better to do that. If you think that's the best, best thing for the patient. Okay. That that's one of the, one of the things that I do. And another thing that I do now is I just offer everything to them. So I, I go through my, my, my treatment sheet and I talk about the importance of orthotics and the importance of of the shockwave and the importance of everything. And one of the, one of my challenges, I think maybe like yours is, is we kind of uh, assessed their, their ability to pay for things because it gets to be expensive. So if you do three sessions of shockwave for me, that's 750. If you're doing the orthotics, it's another 600. So it just, it just kind of adds up. I know we, we say we shouldn't be their financial counselor, but sometimes I think of me and what I'd be willing to pay. And, and depending on the, the idea, you have to kind of explain it to them. Okay. So those are those are some of the things that have kind of helped me. Uh, another, the last thing that uh, helps uh, for me is uh, I, I I tend to address their questions before um, I I do the orthotics. So for example, uh, when patients come in, I say my patients usually ask me three questions about orthotics. So they ask me how long do they last which is usually five years. So if someone, this is, so I use that. So when someone comes in, let's say they come with orthotics, they look good, but they're 10 years old or something like that. I say, you know, usually it's five years. And so we should do a new pair. That, that's how I kind of get by that. If, if everyone asks, oh, because a lot of the materials were very, very good, but I, I usually think it's about five years. Some say less, I say about five years. The second thing that they ask is how long do they take to make? And I say, they usually take three to four weeks because that's what my lab takes. And I say they're specifically made for you kind of like uh, eyeglasses. So they're made specific to your foot. That's why they take too long. They're not like the good feed store. Uh, they're not like uh, the over-the-counter ones. So that's something I say. And, and if I do use this example of the good feed store, I also say to kind of shock them, I say they're not going to cost you like $2,000 like they would at the good feed store. So by putting you putting like a baseline really high and then you bring it down, there's that that shift in, in price that, that helps them think, well, I'm actually getting a discount. So this is something that's kind of a, a sales technique where you say they're not going to be $2,000 like at um, a good feed store, but they're only going to be $600 for you. And they're going to last six months. And the last thing they ask me is, does insurance cover them? And I, and, and I usually say, you know, in Massachusetts, they don't cover them. And I'm finding, I bet you, like you are, that insurance is covering uh, less and less. And, you know, I wish they would, but they don't. And so... I, that's how I go over. So I go over their objections even prior to going over the price. Now I'm the one that goes over the price. I know other doctors may, might have your staff to go over the price, but I, I like to be the one to go over the price with them. And for a lot of our patients, 
I scanned them that day. I actually had a, uh, an idea in the past was just scanning everyone. So everyone has a, a scan just makes it easier, but our scanning system is so quick. And the other benefit is I always, I also say, you know, I'm going to stick behind these and, and I work with a company that they will re- 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 replace them or um, give me a, a new pair without even sending back the current pair. So if the pair doesn't fit, I will send it back and they'll get another one. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but I, I really want them to be comfortable with the orthotic. I don't want them to have an orthotic they're not going to use. So that that's the other thing. And then the last thing I would say is always teach, teach, teach kind of about orthotics and kind of the what they do with the muscles, with specific anatomy that you're looking at, how they take tension off the plantar fascia, how they stabilize the heel, all those things. I think teaching is really the best way versus selling. Okay, so we have to offer, offer, offer. So if they're not, if they don't get one the first visit, then you can offer the second visit, then the third visit, and so on and so forth. So those are some tips how to kind of 10x your orthotics. I'd love to know what works for you in your practice. If you have other great ideas, email me, Don at Podiatry Practice Mastery. Once again, trying to get you guys to the million dollar mark. Just so you know, I am probably by the time you're listening to this, because I, I record these in, in advance, I'm, I'm working on a, a group, kind of a mastermind. It's kind of a virtual mastermind where I'm going to be meeting with people. I'm thinking right now it's about WhatsApp because that's the that's the kind of the method that I like to communicate to people. So we have, we're going to have a small group. We have to have a co- accountability. And the goal would be to give, give it a little bit more hands-on to get to that million-dollar mark. Certainly we have the Practice Mastery Academy, which, which I think is excellent if you can do it on your own. But this uh, master class is going to help people kind of with a small group and accountability with each other. Okay. Once again, thanks, guys. Until next time.